Kim Jong-il, the North Korean dictator found a great way to make movies, kidnap the best actress, and the best director from South Korea. Yes, that's right. Kim Jong-il who was the leader of North Korea from 1994 until his death in 2011, was a movie buff. In 1978, one of South Korea's most well-known actress, Choi Yoon-hee, was having trouble regaining her earlier career success. She had been lured to Repulse Bay, a waterfront area in the southern part of Hong Kong Island, by a man claiming to be from Hong Kong and promising a possible film partnership. She got out of her car and saw a group of men standing near a boat. Choi noticed that something wasn't quite right, but she was grabbed, sedated and thrown onto the ship before she could think about it further. Choi was in the captain's quarters when she awoke. A portrait of Kim Jong-il, the head of North Korea's propaganda and agitation department at the time, was displayed above her. Choi arrived in Pyongyang eight days after being kidnapped, where Kim greeted her as an honored guest rather than as someone who had been forced to surrender to him. In Kim's mind, Choi and her ex-husband, award-winning film director Shin Sang-uk were the very people the country needed to spearhead a new era in North Korean filmmaking, one that would make the entire world sit up and take notice. The fact that Choi and Shin would be held by the state as prisoners was of little concern to the authority. They were there, no matter how their guests got there. Additionally, Kim was opposed to their departure. Kim, who eventually succeeded his father as leader of North Korea reportedly owned more than 30,000 films and ordered traveling diplomats to bring back copies of international films for his enjoyment. Choi was only the first part of the plan. Once she was grabbed, Shin began a desperate search for her. The two, who had once been considered a golden couple in South Korea, had divorced in 1976 following Shin's affair with a younger actress, but they remained close. Shin, too, found himself being hustled to Pyongyang with a bag over his head when that trail eventually led him to Hong Kong. Shin was more combative, whereas Choi had accepted her fate in some way. He was sentenced to prison after making numerous attempts to flee. Shin ate grass, salt, and rice for four years, but he never saw Choi or heard anything about her safety. As far as Shin knew, she was dead. Shin was finally released in 1983 and invited to a party. To their mutual shock, the former couple was reunited, neither one knowing the other had been there the entire time. Kim apologized for the delayed meeting, saying he had been busy. He dismissed the notion that Shin would spend four years in prison as a misunderstanding. Kim only then provided an explanation for the two's presence. He explained that since North Korean filmmakers did not have any novel concept, he wanted Shin and Choi to make films that would establish North Korea in the film industry. None of it was presented as a choice. That same year, the couple remarried also reportedly at Kim's suggestion. After a couple of years, they were allowed to travel to Berlin to scout locations for productions. There was discussion of escape but Shin dismissed it. Instead, Shin pondered the opportunity. Kim gave him the equivalent of $3 million as an annual salary for both personal and professional use. His production offices grew to more than 700 employees. Kim was very happy with the work Shin and Choi were producing so gradually, he gave them more and more freedom to travel, eventually allowing them to take an escorted trip to Vienna in 1986. At the first chance they got they escaped, took a taxi to the American embassy, and explained their eight-year ordeal as creative captives of Kim. North Korea argued that the two simply wanted to escape the restrictive nature of South Korean filming and denied that the two had been there against their will. However, Choi had ensured that they returned with evidence. During one of her meetings with Kim, she had slipped an audio cassette recorder into her handbag. Kim told her that if they were ever asked what they were doing in North Korea, they should say that they were there voluntarily. Shin and Choi remained in the United States, where they had been granted political asylum. They eventually returned to South Korea in 1999, though some South Koreans believed Shin had gone to the North and pledged allegiance to communism voluntarily and treated him with suspicion. 